Jeff, um, you say some odd stuff is happening. Explain that to me. Dear Joe, a lot of cross currents in the marketplace today, but to your point, I have to go back to my bond leadership. I cut my teeth in this business, trading futures, in the U.S. Treasury pits in Chicago. And when you see a 20 basis point jump in that 10-year note after a lousy auction, on top of the fact that CPI did come in hotter than expected, I do see resiliency. But what's really odd to me is that the VIX is only above 16, and then you see NVIDIA. NVIDIA has turned into a safe haven. Yes, Deirdre, a safe haven, it seems like, as we're seeing sellers booking profits, but they're still piling in NVIDIA. So I do have a little bit of concern about the backbone of the leadership we've seen in NVIDIA. So if you look at a chart here, because I think it is defying gravity when you look at a technical chart, that 50-day moving average, Deirdre, is $50 lower. The 200-day moving average is $300 lower, down around $558. I don't think NVIDIA goes down there, but when you see technicals line up like this, I think that $800 level is coming, and that could change the sentiment, mm -hmm. and that could move the VIX higher and cause a little bit deeper of a pullback around 49.50 in the S&P 500. Jeff, when you look at the fundamentals of an NVIDIA, though, it's a very different picture, right? It's just had blowout quarter after blowout quarter, making that valuation actually seem more reasonable, even as the stock has become more expensive on an absolute basis. Unequivocally, and I think that's the last $500 in the video. I think it's interesting. Yesterday, you see Intel come out. We didn't get a pricing yeah. on their competitive chips, but they talked about being a fraction of the cost and more efficient, nearly 50% more efficient. We didn't really see a move off of that. So I understand that NVIDIA is the leader. I have exposure. I'm still long NVIDIA, but we do have a hedge in place using options to overlay our position because I do have concern that's been too much too fast. But today is just a really interesting right. example when you see the markets pulling back and NVIDIA up almost 2%. Right, but Intel versus NVIDIA to me is like apples to oranges, right? Intel is trying to catch up, whereas NVIDIA... Well, we're still talking fruit, though, dear Jen. I think at the end <laughs> of the, the year, you are going to see some of that market share it's very simple. If you have orders with NVIDIA's chips, if you have a small deposit down there and you're going to get presented an opportunity to buy those chips at 50% yeah. less, you're going to cancel your order. That's just, that's just the way if the market works. If you think NVIDIA is a chip company, works. but increasingly it's a software company, it's an ecosystem, and that is helping hold on to its dominance. But Jeff, let's get off NVIDIA. What does it tell us about the broader markets? I mean, as we head into this period of more volatility, when there's questions about the number of interest rate cuts, um, if any, when there's questions about commodities and inflation, do you go to those defensive market leaders like the mega caps that carried the markets last year? I think there's bifurcation, not right now, but I think there's a lag effect. And you are seeing some of these names still defy gravity. But when you see the move in 10-year note, we haven't seen the 10-year note up at this since last October. When you talk about the last October, that sentiment, that mindset was that we had six rate cuts coming in 2024. I think they've all been taken off the table. The Fed, this isn't an outlier number in the CPI data, Deirdre. We are seeing three consecutive months of hotter than expected mm -hmm. inflation. I think the Fed's handcuffed here. Therefore, that 10-year note up here, there's going to be a lag effect. We're seeing 30-year mortgages move higher. There are ripple effects. We can't just have these yields move higher and no effect on equities. Right, and I know you're looking at the VIX, which has been under 16 after the CPI. Does that show complacency or resilience? Is that sort of the uh, distinction that you're making? You think there's more pain ahead? Yes, and look, I've been cautious optimistic. I was a lone bull in 2023, so I think we have to get through this pocket of volatility, but the VIX at 16, that's historically low. If we go back to where the VIX has been, we haven't seen it above 25 in a year. We have to go all the way back to October of 22, when we saw markets in turmoil to see the VIX above 30. So I think there is a spike in volatility coming short term. And I think it's going to be bought with the $6 trillion on cash. But right now, I think you have to buckle up your chin strap. Okay. Jeff Kilberg, always great to get your insights. Thank you. KKM Financial.